But the breathless coverage of the NATO unity tour and the committee hearing ignored a story which is new, unpredictable, and important. The Border Patrol today started dropping off hundreds, if not thousands, of illegal immigrants in the town of Uvalde and Carrizo Springs, Texas. These are small towns. They don't have airports or bus stations. Here's the pictures. There are now hundreds, if not thousands, of people in these towns with no way to get out. The Border Patrol told mayors their facilities were simply too full. Consider the numbers from last month to show why. The Border Patrol encountered 164,000 people last month. That's roughly the population of Springfield, Missouri, in one month. That is up 350% from February of 2020. Allie Bradley, independent journalist who covers the borders. Have we ever been in a situation where there are people being just dropped off in towns that have no way out of the towns? No, Leland, not that I have seen, not that any of the law enforcement individuals that I've been speaking to have seen either. And most of the law enforcement individuals that I regularly speak to have been in law enforcement along the border for 30 plus years. So they compare this to in the 90s when we saw a surge, but they say this is completely different. The type of demographic, what they're seeing come across the border right now is completely different. They're dealing with a lot more family units this time around. And when you have nowhere to house these people, yeah, they are going to basically end up in these small communities. I mean, you mentioned mm -hmm. Rizzo Springs and Uvalde. Uvalde only has 16,000 people in the city. So, you know, that is that is definitely a hard thing to swallow here. And then you look at Del Rio, the humanitarian coalition there, the one NGO that works with everybody there, literally today, Leland said that this is a dress rehearsal. This was a dress rehearsal, what we saw in September under that bridge. They're saying they're already seeing it worse than what we saw in that situation. Hmm. The sheriff there tells me they are doing everything that they can to keep people out from under that bridge this time around. You think about the Border Patrol overall, you've got great sources there, 165,000 approximately encounters. Uh, the more overwhelmed they become with processing all these folks, the more that are let out in airports and everywhere else, as that video shows. But more importantly, the less time they have to patrol, uh, are the number of gotaways or people who ended up slipping through the cracks, what do they estimate that at now? Honestly, I don't know what that estimate, uh, what that estimation is, Leland, but I will tell you this. I know that the borders right now are pretty much unmanned. From all of my sources telling me they've all been pulled back into process, there aren't law enforcement individuals really manning that border. We saw hmm. that exact same situation in Del Rio. We know that that whole entire border was unmanned because all of the resources were pulled to that. And now remember last week when we talked, Leland, I had told you that they were going to be playing a game of musical chairs with these people. It's exactly what's happening. I've been asking them, where are these people going? These facilities are already maxed out. They are taking them to different facilities throughout Texas so that they can be housed there. Because yeah, well, they no, just no, I guess, though, to continue the metaphor, essentially, the music stopped, right? And now the people without chairs, where these facilities are overcrowded, are being dropped off in city after city after city. Mm -hmm. You're exactly right. Okay. And they were, that was literally directed by the federal government. They said, hey, our facilities are maxed out. Basically, this is a you problem at this point. You guys have got to figure this out. And when I talked mm -hmm. with the Uvalde County Sheriff just an hour ago before we before this live shot here, we were discussing what they're going to do. And he said that the SWART buses, those, those images you saw, that was the best option that they had. Now, that is a federal and state-run transit mm -hmm. uh, private company. And they said that they were used back in 2019 when we saw a surge, and that was the best option was to use those buses again. I will be following up to see if there's a better option, but I haven't gotten any word back from DHS. I've been hammering, trying to figure what, out what, what is... You talked to the Uvalde sheriff uh, and the mayor. I know you chat with down there. What's their plan? They, they're going to end up with hundreds, if not thousands, of people on the streets of this town of 16,000 people. What do you do? Really, right now, it's keeping their community safe is their priority, but it's to get people out as soon as they possibly can, right? That's the, they don't want people just walking into the interior of these communities mm -hmm. with no direction, no help. There are no NGOs in Carrizo Springs or in Uvalde. So there really is no help. So they are trying to transport them up to San Antonio to get on those airplanes to get to wherever their, their destination is, really. Yeah, I, Katie bar the door when Title 42 uh, gets turned over or ended, and now people won't be deported. We know there's going to be even more 
coming over. All right, Allie, thank you very much. We appreciate it. Thanks for watching. Click the red subscribe button below so you can get more of News Nation's fact driven, unbiased coverage.